Well, we're now joined by uh, Yankees legend, the voice of the Yankees, a recurring guest on the short porch, the legend himself, John Sterling. John, how's it going? Well, it's good. Uh, this is spring training. We only do about 10 games. Right. So we're about, well, as we uh, shoot this or record this, we're about halfway through. Yep. And, uh, and then the season, and if, on behalf of the Yankees, it would be a lot better if, if Messrs. Judge and Stanton were healthy and would playing. Nice. But uh, this ball club has so much talent, they actually could get by without them. It would be much easier with them. Right. And so we hope that they'll... I don't listen to news. I'm really good about that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you, you just hear us, things you know, on Twitter. radio, TV, uh, read the newspapers, and um, for you guys, go on the Internet. Yep. And a lot of people say a lot of things, and they don't know anything. But we'll see. No one knows. I'm very <laughs> and, good at that. And, I don't know much. And, I say and the a Yankees lot. survived last year. How could it be worse than last year? So Right. You'd like to not do that again and maybe you know have right. a little more healthier people this year. Um, but how has spring training been treating you? What are your overall thoughts of the team so far, what you're seeing? Well, I could tell you what I think my 25 men – well, no, no, this year. 26. 26. Yeah. Which is very good for the Yankees. Helps. Yep. They'll be able to carry another very talented player. Um, you know, really, um, I, I don't make any judgments on spring training. Sure. The games don't mean anything at all. And um, I'd say the best news the Yankees have given is that after losing Severino for the year, boy, what a loss. He didn't pitch last year either. I feel so bad. Uh, that's two know. years. Um that the number three starter, Jay Happ, and the number four starter, Jordan Montgomery, have both pitched very well. Now, does it mean anything to pitch well here? Yeah, I don't know, and I don't think so. I right. never think so. But uh, I'd say going into the season, they're going to be the prohibitive favorite in their division, and I could understand that. The uh, fifth starter spot's one of the battles that are going on at spring training. We were just talking, actually, earlier. We interviewed Clark Schmidt and Michael King. Who do you think uh, might grab that fifth spot right now? If you... Well, right now they're very high on, on Schmidt. Right. Um, they can go without a fifth starter and use Chad Green as the opener with Sessa behind him uh, that they did very well last year. Um, again, we have three weeks to go in spring training. So there's a lot of games Definitely. and a lot of decisions. And, by the way, a lot of injuries that will come <laughs> up. So I'm not sure. But those are two, two people, uh, King, Michael King and, and Clark Schmidt. Don't forget, whoever is pitching, think how lucky they are. They have this team. that There's not a bad hitter on the team. I can give you a team right now. There's not one bad hitter on the team. And then they have – a, a very deep bullpen in back of them. The top five guys are really good. So um, whoever starts, gee, all I have to do is pitch okay. Yeah. Yeah. And they're going to get, you know, some runs, and they're going to get a bullpen. Yeah, yeah they'll have like two or three runs. They're going to be pretty good. They have, we're probably going to score six runs a game almost. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, a guy who might pitch okay this year, newcomer Garrett Cole. What are your early impressions of him? Have you had a chance to talk to him at all? No, I have not. Um However, you don't have to convince me about Garrett Cole. Yeah. I saw him pitch against the Yankees. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And um, we broadcast a Saturday game when he started. Right. And just electric. Amazing. In fact, he was so electric, they had to keep sending him out. He never got to his pitch count. So uh, Yeah, he was shooing away Boone, basically, in that, in that third inning. It's a terrific way to begin to have yeah. a guy that good at the top of your rotation. Yeah. So It all – you can – you, not to say you can survive without Severino, but it makes it a lot easier to handle when you have Garrett Cole as your number one and everything else. Kind well, of two just... things. They went out, you know, the old, they put their money where their mouth is getting Garrett Cole, and then they really put their money where their mouth is by not trading away Jay Happ, who is right. now the number three starter. Good thing. Yeah. One other thing I will say, you know, you battled your way through April and, and May, and the Yankees are then going to get back James Paxton and Domingo Herman, yeah. the two really good starting <laughs> yeah. pitchers. So uh, I'm, if you wanted me to worry about the Yankees, n no, not yet. Okay. No, they have too good a team. Yeah. With the Garrett Cole signing, you know, the Yankees in past free agents, they've sort of passed on some of the guys, Patrick Corbin or whoever it may be. What do you think it was about Garrett Cole that said, you know, this is the guy we're breaking the bank through under $24 million, whatever it is, he's our guy? The way they've seen him pitch. Yeah, <laughs> that'll do it. Without question. Just can't lose in, including yeah. against the Yankees. In the uh, ALCS last year. You know, you can't make every deal. And sometimes, it's, in other words, if they had, let's say, gotten Machado or um, 
Harper. Or Harper. Harper. Yeah. Yeah. And they wouldn't have had the money. It's not limitless. And they wouldn't have had the money to go get Garrett Cole. And a number one pitcher is important or more important. And they didn't get Machado and so the unearthed, fortunately, Gio Urshela. They never figured that would happen. Right. Don't forget Andujar. He didn't play at all last year. And they have him added to the team. So sometimes you have to hold on to your chips and you wait until it's the right move. And um, right now we think it's the right move. Yeah, definitely. How do you feel about Andujar in the outfield? Love it. I do too. I I've been great. rooting all – I want you to know I've been – two things. They didn't listen to me. They don't listen to me. They <laughs> should. They I'm should. I'm glad you're listening to me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think when he's right, uh, Dylan Patances is the best relief pitcher in baseball. Now – is he right? I don't know. And will he be all right during the year? I mean, the Yankees, you have to give him credit. Cashman's a pretty bright guy, and his, his lieutenants are pretty bright people. Look yeah. at the team they put together. But um, I was very sorry to see Batances go. And on the same score, I mean, I would tell Susan and Michael this all, all went along. I want to see Andujar play every single day. <laughs> Left field or first base. I wouldn't care if he made three errors every game. Well, he's really played left field very well. Yeah. And his outfield tutor, Reggie Willits, thinks the world of him. You know he can hit. Yeah. Mike. So I, I wanted them really to keep Andujar because I've been saying on the air, on the talk shows <laughs> I did this winter, that um, he can be uh, J.D. Martinez, uh, Nick Castellanos, uh, Ryan Braun, those kind of right-hand hitters who hit for high average and power, and he can do both. So um, uh, he's, I'm hoping to. Uh, uh, left field's coming along very, very well. Yeah. Yeah, I know if Stanton is healthy without Hicks, who's always injured, and he's yeah. coming back from Tommy John in midseason, um, you'd have Gardner in center between Stanton and Judge, and Andujar then could be the DH. And if Stanton is hurt, or needs a day off, then Miguel can play left field. And they have one other uh, outfielder that is in question if if there's an injury, and that's Clint Frazier. Yeah. He's an awfully good hitter. And, um, you know, hopefully his defense will be better in the outfield. And then Mike Tockman. So yeah, that's what I meant by talent and depth. If the Yankees have to go to them, they won't lose very yeah, much. We have good problems right now. Yeah, yeah. it's like yeah. it's not a bad thing to have. A lot of teams do not have that luxury <laughs> for sure. You mentioned uh, Dellen leaving. A couple other guys are leaving. DD and Austin Romine. How do you think their departures uh, will affect the team? Well, I like both players certainly, but you know, the, you can't. I remember this. I was with Joe Torre during the Great Run, and and a fan came up to him well-meaning, well-spoken, and said, Joe, one thing, I'd like you to bring everyone back. And he said, um, I'd love to, but you can't do it. You yeah. can't bring everyone back. Right. So uh, Glaber will play shortstop just fine. It's a great infield. Urshela, uh, Glaber Torres, and DJ, not only do they hit, but those are three tremendous fielders. Void is healthy, and, you know, we're recording this in – in the beginning of March, I mean, there's a long way to go. Right, yeah. Yankees opened the season March 26, very early this year in, in Baltimore. Um, at the present time, as I mentioned, they have they have a heck of a ball club. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the season ended, obviously, against the Astros last year, obviously in 2017 as well. They they pretty much stole the headlines this offseason, aside from Garrett Cole. Have they ever. What are your <laughs> overall thoughts about everything going on with that cheating scandal? It's It dominated the headlines. Well, I'm not there, and I'm not in their dugout, but I'll tell you this. Think of it this way. If you cheated in 2017 and won, won the championship, and you cheated in 18, and you got knocked out by the eventual champion in the, in the ALCS, you're trying to tell me you didn't cheat in 2019? Please. <laughs> Do I believe that? No. And... Um, We've all seen the video, what, about a thousand times oh, now yeah, of buddy. Altuve yep. coming home and saying, no, no, <laughs> you know, holding onto his shirt like this. <laughs> the most uh, guilty person ever. And then running into, through the dugout into the, I mean, let me ask you a question. You've seen all these million of sport events. If you hit the home run in the bottom of the ninth to win the ALCS and propel your team into the World Series, 
Uh, Aaron Boone yeah. did that. Yep. Uh, you wouldn't stay on the – usually you stay on the field, you hug everyone yeah. in sight, you jump on the dog pile, yeah. you, you do a million interviews, and he didn't. He you ran into the clubhouse. You, you could get me naked. Ever. <laughs> 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 and came back with a different no. shirt on. Yeah. I mean, okay. I know it's circumstantial, something. but maybe – it's heavy circumstances. Yeah. And the excuses were so bad, too. My oh, wife, I'm, I'm shy. Terrible. And then there's pictures of him with his shirt off. And then his wife doesn't like when he takes his shirt off. And then the tattoo. The tattoo, the tattoo it's is just, bad. It's, that just, is, yeah. it's just bad. And, it's a and bad. one more thing. I mentioned this on the air. I think it was Susan, so it had to be during a game this year. The Houston players were not very forthcoming when they were in interviews. I mean, they thought, well, yeah, we had a problem. But... It won't happen again, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Okay. I would think the Houston players would be blown away, not by the media. You know what kind of bums we are. <laughs> and, um, and newspaper guys and internet and all. But look at the players who have spoken out. Oh, yeah. The greatest, biggest players in the game. Mike Trout, he never says anything. Anything, unless it's the weather. That's it. Aaron Judge. <laughs> Giancarlo, uh, I'm, I'm Cody, really Bellinger. Cody, Cody Bellinger, Cody Bellinger, yeah. Cody Bellinger, yeah. Look, the the biggest players in the game. Never seen anything like it. Yes, and so believe me, players never knock each other. And here, the biggest players in the game came out. So you know, Houston, they deserve it. They'll be under the scrutiny. Yeah, all every, year, every <laughs> away game they play. You know, I don't know what it means because they have a very good team. Yeah. But um, I think it's amazing that the, the biggest players spoke out. That has to tell you something. Do you think they'll be like, more motivated, the Astros, this year? Because like, it's everyone against them yeah, now? You know, it's tough, though, in baseball. Yeah. You know, it, I can see if you're playing one basketball, football, or hockey game where it's physical. But baseball's not. Yeah, How good you're pitching? How good's their pitching? And there's, there's game after game. They may say it. Everyone says the right thing, but... I don't, I don't see how they could be more motivated. Mm-hmm. Now, one thing they have, if you said to me, how will Dusty do as manager, how will Rojas do in New York, and how will uh, um, Ron Renneke do in Boston, they're going to do <laughs> great because they have great teams. They can't miss in that way. Yeah. So they'll all be big competitive teams because they're talented. And talent will out in any sport. Yep. Do you believe the punishments handed down by Manfred were soft and not enough, like a lot of the people were saying? What would you have punished them with? Well, they, I think they must have made a deal with the, with the players. Right. And that's why the punishment wasn't heavier. No, the punishment should have been a lot would heavier. Would you have stripped the title? No, because what are you going to do with it? It's like, are you going to give it to somebody? That, that, no one wants That's not that. a way to win it. Right. Um, my, I don't know if I would have stripped the title. I would, I would just like if Alex Bregman couldn't go around saying that he's a World Series champion. Right, like, you right. know, Because that, they're holding on to that right now, and they're like, oh, in the postseason it was different. But it wasn't, you know. No, so, no, not at all. Yeah, I don't know. A lot of, a lot of people were. I'm just saying if, uh, what you're saying. If, if, if it works on, you know, July 23rd against Kansas City, right. don't tell me you're not going to do that in sure. a big game. So. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely not. Do you think it was going on, in general, electronic sign stealing? Do you think it is a big problem in baseball, aside from just the Astros? Do you think, I mean, maybe no one doing it to that degree, but do you think that's like a part of the modern game that's an issue? Uh, there's been cheating in, in baseball yeah. or all sports. You give them an inch, they're going to take a mile. In every sport, they'll find a way to get around it. Um, I told this on the air, so I can tell it on your show. In the early 90s, Buck Showalter is managing the Yankees. And um, you couldn't find three more um, heavier buck rooters than myself and Susan and, and Michael Kay. And it was like a family. Uh-huh. And um, we're in Chicago in the old ballpark. And they had these spinning Ferris wheels on top of the scoreboard. And Buck said, <laughs> see that? That's where they, they, they spy, get our signs <laughs> and... You either turn the wheel or you don't. It goes or it doesn't go, and that's how you find out. So this wow. now, I don't think it's wrong. I'm going to give you two great stories. Now, I don't think sign stealing is wrong at all, but not electronic stuff. Yeah. I want it done by the player in the dugout and by the coach. So I'll give you two stories. Uh, the Yankees had a pitcher years ago. He's deceased, 
is a, um, a great right hand. His name was Bob Turley. He practically won the 58 World Series by himself. And he was super bright. And when he left baseball, I, he went into insurance and became a multi, multi millionaire. And um, I got to know him on old timers' days. You know, so. But anyway, there's a great story about Turley. He, he was so bright. When you wind up and throw, he could tell you what pitch you're throwing, okay? Whether you saw the motion or the hands or whatever. So talk about banging the trash cans. <laughs> Bob Turley would whistle. Really? And to call the pitches for his Yankees. And so the story goes that some veteran pitcher went over to one of the Yankees before a game, and he said, if I hear him whistle, you're going down. <laughs> so that's <laughs> Bob Turley. The other great story has to do with the Dodger manager in the early 50s who was a uh, noted egotist. His name was Charlie Dressen. He was such a, an egotist. And everything was I. And <laughs> I did this. I did that. I'm right. And so when he would leave an area, leave a group, the players whom he had left would go sing, I, 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 I. That was Charlie Dressen. So, well, the Dodgers won the pennant, a great team, and he managed the National League All Star team. And they're in the clubhouse before the game, and one of the players goes over to Dressen and says, Well, Skip, what, what are the signs? And Dressen says, Oh, don't worry, I'll give you your own signs. <laughs> <laughs> so, that kind of thing's been going on forever. Yeah. But you you can't allow um, cameras are a new angle. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. You, can't, it's you can't allow signs. the technology to yeah. go in. Yeah. It's decoding signs, which everyone does to an extent, and then it's the stealing signs, which is what Houston was doing. Like if you can if you can pick up on a pitcher's tell, that's just baseball. That's, right. been, going but, yeah, that's been going on. Forever. But when you're doing a live feed, you know, with using uh, interns and, and everywhere, and you can't miss, you can't yeah. miss. Yeah. yeah. Not I mean, good. Yeah. Imagine if D.J. LeMahieu knew what pitch was coming, what he right. would do. Right. I mean, he, had, he, he might bat 800. Yeah. Well, that's, that's what Stanton said. He said, if I knew what pitch was coming, I'd have hit 80 home runs. 80 yeah. home runs. So. I mean, it's, and it's I believe crazy. that, too. I really do yeah. think he'd hit right. With the juice balls, too? Yeah. yeah. I, probably, I probably wouldn't put it past them. Um, uh, you had your streak, your illustrious streak. Uh, 5,060 consecutive games came to a close last year, obviously. At some point, you just had to. Um, you took the four games off the eight days. And Ryan Rucco filled in for you. He's been on our show before. Um, how hard was it to end that streak and, you know, to see Ryan, you know, take over? And obviously, I'm sure you have a great relationship with Ryan. Just what was that all like? Um, well, uh, first of all, about the streak. Yeah. It really began uh, the first game the Hawks played in Atlanta – in 1981, it was my first Hawks game. Well, let's say it was November 3rd. I have no idea when it was. Now, I didn't miss a game for the Hawks and Braves. So the streak is really a lot more Longer. games. It goes back to 81. I didn't miss a game with the Hawks and Braves in the 80s. And the only two games I missed for the Yankees when my sister passed away. Uh, I had to bury her. And the Yankees were in Seattle. I think they had a day off. And they played three, and I got there after two games, something like that. And um, so they're saying, well, that's when the streak started. My foot, and I wasn't, I didn't miss games. I right. had to. I mean, that's, right. a, right. that's right. as family a thing as possible. Of course. Yeah. Of course. Now, the good thing, now, I never cared about it. I never went ever to the ballpark saying, boy, I've added another game to the streak. <laughs> I could not have cared less. Obviously, it means nothing. It doesn't bring in any money or whatever. And the only thing I have that happened yesterday in the ballpark in uh, wherever we were yesterday. In, in Bradenton? No, we weren't in Bradenton. Oh, in Lakeland. Okay. And uh, people would come up to me, and they do it all the time. How are you? And the Yankees came up to me. How are you? Gee, I, I did every game yes. after. <laughs> I'm great. I, yeah. I missed four, happily. Yeah. The Yankees were in the, the um, London trip killed me. I had two flights in three days. Tough. I couldn't go with the Yankees because um, my um, trips were graduating high school. So I had to go the next day and get up at four in the morning, which I can't do. And um, I, I did, but it, it obviously hurt. And I was really sick on the way back. And um, But we had Monday off, and Tuesday and Wednesday we played at City Field. 
And so uh, then they were going to Tampa. And when the Yankees go somewhere, they never get a day game, a uh, day getaway game. And they get everywhere at 4 in the morning. And so I thought, boy, I don't want to do that. So that's why I took the four games off. And then it, it uh, dovetailed. With the next week was the All-Star break. Right. So I had eight days off. And, you know, I got better and obviously didn't miss another game for the rest of the year. And I don't plan, unless I get sick, I'm missing any games this year either. <laughs> so for me, it's a labor of love. I get my tail out. You know, the day games hurt because sure. I don't get up early. You yeah, know, you're, a late, you're a late sleeper. Boy, right? I'm a late everything. <laughs> and I, I would be a late everything anyway. But um, uh, now I have an excuse. I've been working nights for about 55 straight years. <laughs> right. So... Um, anyway, I, I, the streak is over. It meant nothing. And now um, we'll go ahead. And as someone told me yesterday, you'll build another streak. Mike yeah, Harkin yeah. told me that. <laughs> you'll build another. I said, sure, 30 more years. Easy. <laughs> I love that. I'll sign up did, for that. Did you listen to those four games on radio and hear Ryan Rucco? And what did you think of him? And was it weird to hear somebody else besides you calling? You know, it Yankee wasn't. Games? I didn't listen to radio. The Mets were also playing. And in my bedroom, I have a great apartment in uh, Edgewater. It overlooks the Hudson. It's really, I love it, the best I've ever had. And I had somebody from Sony, one of the heads of Sony, I met at a party, the Yankee party, and they had all their big uh, uh, contributors down. And I said to him, uh, you know, I, I can use you. I'm moving to a new apartment. I don't know when, whenever it's open. And I, I have to put in TVs. And he said, I'll give you a name. And he gave me a name of a guy who did the most. The, I wasn't there. I was on the road. Did the greatest job I've ever seen. There were three bedrooms. And he put these big screens against the wall. You have to work with a remote in, let's say, the girls' room and the boys' room and the living room. But he put, upon my instructions, <laughs> two in my room. That's, okay? that's what you need. Side by side. They cover up the wall. And um, the king size bed is back on the other wall, and it's perfect. So what I did is, I put on both the Yankee game and the Met game. I had the sound down, and I watched the games. That's what, especially for the, it, him to set all that up on the road is fantastic. You don't have to even go through the construction. You came home, and it's all done. Right. It was all done. <laughs> Phenomenal. Yeah. Finally, this is after the fire. I had a fire in my in my last place, and I. I left, you know, with the clothes on my back. That's all. I lost oh, that's everything. Terrible. But I had to get myself in gear. I went to a hotel, the smartest thing I ever did. I didn't know how long, how big the fire was. And I thought maybe it'd be over by the evening. Yeah. Well, of course, it demolished the building. And um, uh, so I had a few months before this new building was going to be ready. And um, it all worked out. Yeah. I'm very lucky. I'm a very lucky guy. It's all worked out. We're lucky to have you. Um, to Ryan Rucco, have you, do, what's your relationship like him, him taking over uh, for those four games? Did you have any say in who no, the no, person was? No, no, no. I, I, I don't really get it involved. Now, Ryan's a wonderful fella. Um, I know him well. Um, yeah, I'm sure he did a great job. Yep. I, I didn't hear it. And then I had a, um, a medical thing. I had to take one more night off, which I did. And after that, you know, everything was a smooth. In fact, whether it was the eight days, which it might have been, or um, I had had a medical problem and it went away. It was cured, thank God. Good. And um, from that time on, I was fine. And I started to sleep again. I spent one year not sleeping. I didn't miss any games, though. And so everything's cool. So I know you've said you plan to keep going, basically, as long as you have a voice. Is that that's still the case? We're just going to keep powering through? <laughs> well, <laughs> the first thing, um, I have uh, four children in college this year. You think that's expensive? Oh, yes. that'll do Goodness it. <laughs> gracious. Now, one, Abigail, is graduating Syracuse. So, so really? Yeah. Well, she's in Newhouse. Oh, Loves it. She's doing very she's well. She's up there on Saturday. Yeah, I was there a couple of weeks ago before spring training. Beautiful place. Beautiful campus. So um, um, I would be working anyway because I have all these kids in college. But actually, uh, as long as I, my voice is still the same, I'm going to work as long as I can. I 
Now, when Vin Scully was about my age, he said, um, well, it depends on your health, if you're healthy, you know. Now, he didn't do all the games, though. I mean, he just did West Coast games. Uh-huh. Um, but I do all the games. And, um, you know, I guess I plan to do it until health tells me no. <laughs> Uh, your man of very uh, a lot of nicknames uh, that you give these guys, and uh, the home run calls. What was your favorite new one last year? Well, I think uh, Gio Urshela, okay, the most happy fella, That's a good, great which one. I could sing the first line. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I do these things, and it's, it's gone over very well. Yeah, but there are a lot of people who have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> they, don't, they don't know the most happy fella is a great Broadway show. Yeah, with phenomenal music, Frank Lesser wrote music and lyrics. But anyway, I thought that was that was pretty good. The Sockman one, really, that's yeah, stuck too. Aaron Boone walks around with a Sockman T-shirt on. Yeah. <laughs> Talkman, the Sockman, yeah, it worked. That works. That definitely yeah. works. Like was Silly, isn't it? Radio. I know. <laughs> Fantastic. What What is your favorite part of the job? I mean, you say you can't, you don't get tired of it, and you want to keep going forever. How uh, How much do you love? Is there one thing that stands out? Is your, just your favorite part of getting to go and call Yankee games every day? Well, I, I, truthfully, I, I, the games come very easy. I, I told my bosses said Entercom, the new company that bought out CBS, as a gal named uh, Susan Larkin, and I said to her, well, actually, the games are the easiest things I do, and i got to get to the game. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I wish I could be, you know, helicoptered right into my seat Snap five minutes fingers, yeah. Yeah. before right Susan uh, gives the intro. I love working with Susan. And I love the game. If I didn't love the games, it would be terrible. And um, now I'll tell you something else. My engineer, and I have a great producer engineer, Jack Maldonado, and he set up something called Roku. Oh, yeah. You know what that is? Oh, yeah. Well, a few years ago, I had no idea. It's relatively new. <laughs> Sounded so like I a disease, you know. <laughs> well, he's got a bad case of Roku. <laughs> <The> Roku. <laughs> um, I like that. Roku virus. So, <laughs> so upstairs in my room, yeah. I have Roku. And I had to make a lot of calls today, a lot of business calls. And um, one I'll tell you because um, it's very, it's a very nice thing. But and anyway, I have Roku in my room, and I was watching um, while I was making all these calls, uh, the uh, Tampa Bay Oriole game. So I, I actually like it, yeah. you know, and, I, and I've liked it since I was a little boy. And um, so the games are easy. Now, the fact that, as I said before, they never give the Yankees a getaway day game kills you. Kills me. Oh, kills everyone. Yeah. <laughs> we get into every town at four, and I can't go to sleep right away. I'm up for at least an hour and a half. You know, I unpack and yeah. you know, I pour a little drink and, you know, and relax. It takes me a long time. And um, so that's the tough part. The four in the morning is the tough part. The easiest thing is the games. And, yeah. the, you know, it's great with the Yanks. The bigger the game, um, the more you like it because it's, it's quote-unquote, important. And, you know, with the Yankees, as you know, in New York, everything's a federal case. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I did this on the air yesterday, so I can do it with you here. Uh, it's expectation. And uh, with the Knicks and uh, – the Jets and the Giants, they win a game. They go crazy. Newspapers, talk shows, because they never think they're going to win a game. That's why. <laughs> With the Yankees, they're expected to win every game. Yeah. And uh, so it, it makes it, you know, people always say, what do you think of the Yankee-Red Sox rivalry? Well, it's, it's grist for my mill. It's great for me and any other broadcaster or writer because people are paying attention. People are passionate, and that's what you want. What I wanted to tell you was um, the Board of Governors of the Emmys, the New York Emmys, they have a, they have a big night. It's going to be April 18th at the Marriott Marquis. I'm getting a plug in. Great day, by the way. Go it's for my it. birthday. And um, <laughs> I am getting uh, their number one award. The wow. Go- Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Look at that. The Governor's Award. That's awesome. Yeah, congratulations. congratulations. Well deserved. The said to me something really true. Well, you've been on it so long. Of course you're going to get an award. <laughs> you're bound to get one. <laughs> to get one after a right, right. Ha- have you th- I, I've said that you belong there, and I hope one day you're honored in Cooperstown, in the Hall of Fame. Is that something you ever think about? Um, I, I will be as honest as I can. Oh, of course. I, I mean, how would you not think of it? Right. It'll never happen. 
You don't, I don't think have so? The, I don't have the right style. I but you've got. But if I didn't have this style, I wouldn't be. This is my thirty-second year with the Yankees, and I've had nothing but. If you're a broadcaster, and that's your living, you know we're not talking about some parachuting in to do something. That's your living, uh, being on the air for a radio or TV station, whatever you're doing, news, disc jockey, whatever it is. Um, I have literally had what would be called great broadcasting jobs for about 55 years. So if I didn't have that style, I yeah. wouldn't have been able to accomplish that. So, um, you know, I, I, I don't think uh, I, I can tell by a lot of people that uh, they have brought into the Hall of Fame who have very different styles from mine. And um, hey, showbiz, that's showbiz. Maybe we'll make a we'll have to make a push for you yeah. on uh, on the internet a little bit. Maybe you mix in the streak and everything. Yeah. yeah, I think we can make a pretty good case. Yeah, you mentioned before right before we sat down, you don't have a Twitter. Obviously, you don't go on the internet and like I forgot the term you called yourself, but like, out to lunch. I think you said you're as out to lunch as anybody. To there lunch. Is. So let's I talk am. about that a little bit. How you're out to lunch as much as anyone. Well, I'm not. Uh, I'm not on the internet. Um, you know the 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 uh, crank calls you get. You know, first of all, I don't really get. They make a call. You know, I miss it, and I call them right back, and you can't reach that number. Right. Yeah. So what do they get out of it? I, well, nothing. Prank calls? Yeah, nothing. I guess nothing. Do you get prank called a lot? If you, um, from oh, like, oh, like solicitors, oh, you mean? Yeah. 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 oh, selling yeah. or buying or whatever, yeah. right? And sometimes I'll get a call and they'll say, um, "Well, this is a call for your Visa Mastercard account." Oh, I don't have ever never had a Visa Mastercard, so there I can hang up right away. There you go. And other times, yes, there is a problem with your computer, and we and uh, I hang up right away <laughs> because I, I have no computer. <laughs> so, you know, I try to keep up. <laughs> As as best I right. can, but I'm not on the internet. No, you did. I oh, say so you did get into the podcast a game, right? I think last year when we were down here, you mentioned that you were starting a podcast, or you were. Oh you, yeah, you yeah. Right? I do. We haven't done much. We're going to do it again soon. Cool. You pinstripes and on that, everything yeah, right? yeah, pinstripes and bright lights. And what I do is get on. They have the producers who are in in Boston. And they'll bring in letters or so that I can respond to. But for the most part, I just tell <laughs> stories, yeah. and uh, and I hope it works. And I did that last year, and then during the four days off in the All Star break, I had said yes. You know, the people get you months in advance, and I'm a good guy. I say yes. Then all of a sudden, the day comes. Oh, you got to get there. <laughs> so, but I was being paid, so I mean, I I should have gotten there. Right. And I went. And there was a big audience um, in Westchester. And you know what I did for a speech? I did the stories. Yeah. A Joe sure. D story, a Ted Williams story, Bob Turley story, yep. et cetera, et cetera. And it seemed to go over okay. Everyone loves to hear those stories. I have a terrible voice. You think I'd ever be able to be an announcer? <laughs> well, let me tell you this. When I began way back, everyone had to have a good voice. Um I loved a radio station in New York more than all the others, WNAW AM, and they played, you know, Sinatra-ish music, and they had personalities who just did their disc jockey show. I thought that was the end of the world, <laughs> and newscasters, and they all had great voices. Well, that all ended. It may have ended with the um, with talk shows. Yeah, I sometimes think that radio stations want their talk personalities to have bad voices so they sound like the callers, so the callers would identify with them. I'm not sure it's true, but so I, I do, it's not a bad theory. Yeah. I, I, do th I do think so, and I had a buddy. Now I'll give his name. His name is Ira Melman, and he had a big, strong voice, and he did a lot of network stuff for CBS especially, and he's working a sports station in Washington, and they fired him. And <laughs> listen to this. This is some business, by the way. They fired him because he sounded too professional. <laughs> <laughs> That's ridiculous. Okay? So the answer to you is yes. I got a good you chance. Can be you can make All millions. Right. Are you kidding? Sounds good. Especially a really Long Island accent. It's tough. <laughs> I don't know if people are going to enjoy that one. 
<laughs> well, obviously it's not hurting Chris Russo and Joe Benigno and yeah. and people like that. True. So John Dostromsky, yeah, John Dostromsky, yeah. absolutely. Um, as we wrap up here, there's a few changes that are either happening or on the verge of happening in baseball. I just want to get your thoughts on them. First, the three batter rule with relief pitchers. No, I don't like it. Yeah, I mean that's going to. I don't like think anybody. I don't think anybody likes it. Not one person. <laughs> oh, it takes yeah. away the strategy. And in 1996, my favorite year, Susan's favorite year, too. Oh, I was born in, because Chris I was born in 1996. Oh, my God. You were born then. <laughs> I, uh, I, I. <laughs> but they named um, a buddy of mine, <laughs> Joe Torrey, as manager. So that followed Buck, and I was real close to Buck, still am. And, but Joe and I become good friends. And, uh, and they weren't supposed to go anywhere. And, and anyway, you know the rest of it. They... They got to first place May 1st and stayed there for the rest of the year. Yep. Behind every playoff series, and uh, uh, they, they would win games from the seventh inning on. But anyway, they only had one lefty in the bullpen, Graham Lloyd. He was great. And Joe Torre had to wait. He had to wait to use him when he could be most effective to win the game. And obviously he did, and, and they did. So I don't like the three batter rule for that reason. If you have that kind of a lefty, and you're going to hold him for Bryce Harper or someone like that, you should be able to use him for that. Yep. Okay. Ben, a, yep. another one. Uh, this may not happen, but it was thrown out there. The playoff expansion going to seven teams in each league, the top seed getting a bye, and then the other teams picking who they play in the first round. So you'd go to 14 playoff teams. What do, what do you think of all that? Well, I like it because, uh, you know, a lot of people, oh, it's, you know, ruining bait. Well, everything has changed. At one time, you know, when the Yankees, when I was growing up, Yankees would win the the pennant and go right to the World Series. Now, to win the World Series, well, that's a lot. Right. Like football, baseball, hockey, basketball. You, you have to win a few playoff series, which are tough. Um, but I love the sport. So um, the more games for me is... Is even better because I like the games and playoff games are the greatest. Right, and um, I could see myself. I would hope the Yankees finish first <laughs> and aren't involved in this. What a kick it would be to see all the playoff games leading up to when the Yankees get in. But we were saying like what. That the Yankees got to pick and like pick the Twins every time to sweep them again. That would be great. <laughs> well, that's the only thing that. Now you know this. This you've heard. A team in any sport, a team wins early, and some schnook reporter has to ask the question. Um, well, who do you want to play? In the- well, they would die before <laughs> telling you. Well, uh, yeah. we'll just uh, enjoy this for a while, <laughs> yeah. and, uh, then, uh, we'll see. So um, it would be very, it'd be very tough for those teams to pick a team. Yeah, you know, be careful what you. You hope for it. <laughs> yep. so could you imagine the Yankees two years ago picking the Red Sox to play? Like, yeah. the motivation that would start. I mean, it just... Right. The show itself, though, is probably what baseball wants, where the teams would be picking the teams on the show, and that would gain a lot of traction. I personally don't like the buy. That the, they would, the, hopefully it would be the Yankees for the foreseeable future, but that number one seed would have so much time off. And baseball is such a... A, a game of routine, and like these guys don't want that much time off when it comes. You want to be playing almost every day and all that. So, I, so I just think some players won't like that based off the the long layoff that you would have. But we'll see. Um, another thing, uh, robot umpires, the strike zone, the electronic strike zone, seems like something we're inevitably heading towards. Well, I think because of tennis, you know, because they have the so, yeah. the eye, whatever they call it. Yeah, Hawkeye. Um, Hawkeye. I, 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 and the. And the the technology, which I would not understand anyway, would have to be phenomenal. Yeah. And I, I, I prefer seeing the umpire. I, I, I hate, hate the, uh, the uh, reviews. Oh, yeah. As slow as a game of football it kills a football. Yeah. Yep. And I'm the greatest football fan in the world, and I can't tell you how many times, you know, on my Sundays where I have the game on on one set and the red zone on on another. Yep. And I'm yelling, play! <laughs> play! <laughs> so um, I'm not too keen. I like the old days. You know, I like the old days. <laughs> you know, where the umpire would miss a pitch and someone would holler from the dugout. Yeah, that's the best I part of baseball, like yeah. when the manager's yeah. getting thrown and, out. And, and, so. and fans loved, you know, Billy Martin and uh, uh, Ralph Pinella, Pauk and yeah, Lou yeah. Pinella and running out in the umpire, throwing their hat, yeah. and dirt. And who are the fans supposed to boo now? The electronic robot? We don't uh, want to do right. that. <laughs> and also, 
Well, what an anticlimactic way to win a game. Yeah. Oh, they have yeah. to go to a, a, re, a review or replay. Yeah. Whatever. Terrible, terrible. Um, I don't know if you guys had anything else. I was... Uh... I was going to say, uh, I just in general, you know, 2020 season, what, were, what are your expectations uh, for this team? And do you think this is the year that they end, they end the World Series drought and get it done? Well, I do think this. When people predict in any sport, championship, Super Bowl, World Series, um, how, do you, how do you know who you're playing in the first round? <laughs> and yeah. how do you know who's injured? Yeah. But if everything would go exactly alike, I think the Yankees – would have a great chance to beat any team. You know, the Dodgers are a tremendous team, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I think baseball is going to have a hell of a year because in New York there are two terrific teams. And so that's, you know, you got the biggest city will be fully in on the, on the Yankees and Mets. Yeah. And I could see in the National League East this great division race, four teams. Very deep. And in the National League Central the same way, three or four really good teams. So um, I, I think baseball is on the verge of having, I hope, you know, I'm very much of a positive person. I only see the good things. And I, I think they have a chance to have a, a tremendous year. Love to hear it. Uh, John, thank you so much again for coming on. This is recur- your recurring guest now. It's the second year in a row. Hope maybe we'll do it again next year, uh, and we'll talk about how they had a uh, World Series championship number 28. Well, if we do it again next year, I'll be very happy. Yeah. So thank <laughs> you. Absolutely. All right, John Stone, thank everybody. You. Thank you.